Hi folks, Astronomy Live. What you're seeing right now is footage tracked by my newest program, Sat Tracker. This is a program designed for tracking Earth orbiting satellites with a go-to telescope. It's compatible with the LX200 Classic, which is what I'm using to track it here, and it will also be compatible with certain scopes that can use ASCOM's Move Axis method. The footage you're seeing has not been stabilized in post in any way. This is how the tracking actually performed at the full 2 meter focal length of my LX200 telescope. As you can see, it's quite stable. And the reason for that is because it uses video tracking to keep the satellite centered. Tracking starts initially based on the orbital elements. You can load a TLE file, and then the tracking will begin on the first satellite listed in that file. In future versions, I may implement a satellite selector so that you can pick a particular satellite out of a TLE file containing the orbits of multiple satellites, but for the moment I recommend you simply copy the TLE that you want out of a file from multiple satellites and paste it into an individual file and load it that way. Once the tracking begins based on the orbital elements in the TLE file, you can simply click the satellite in the video viewfinder to have it automatically center the satellite and keep it stable throughout the pass. You can then do whatever you need to hands-free. You can move to the eyepiece and view it visually if you wish, or you can go tend to another camera taking images or video through the main telescope. Now to be honest, these images are unremarkable for this satellite. This is a relatively high orbit rocket booster, a Falcon 9 second stage that launched COTS-1 in 2010. It was boosted into an elliptical orbit after it completed its primary mission of delivering a Dragon capsule into orbit, the very same Dragon capsule that you can now see hanging from SpaceX headquarters. This is an image from the webcast of that launch. This is the very same second stage that I tracked with this software. You may wonder how the software performs on a satellite in a lower and faster orbit. Here's an example of that. This is Cosmos 1980. It's a Russian satellite in an 800 kilometer orbit, and you can see when it's locked onto, the tracking is extremely stable for this satellite as well. Once again, this footage was recorded at the full 2 meter focal length of the telescope, and no additional stabilization was added in post. This is how the tracking actually performed. It has the ability to make tracking satellites with go-to telescopes as simple as point and click. Personally, I can't wait to start recording high magnification footage of the International Space Station with this program. It's faster, more stable, and more accurate than the previous version I made in Visual Basic. Unlike small satellites like this one, the International Space Station shows a great deal of detail in my telescope, and at high magnification you can easily make out the solar arrays, the habitat sections, and other pieces of the structure. By boosting the magnification with a Barlow lens, and by selecting passes that travel high overhead where the satellite is close, it's even possible to start resolving details on smaller satellites like the Hubble Space Telescope. This software takes the challenge out of high magnification direct satellite tracking. I will be releasing the software and its source code for free on GitHub. If you want to support further development, I'll also be providing a PayPal donation link. Now let's take a look at the user interface and I'll show you the basics of how this software works. Here's what the program looks like before I've started satellite tracking. Right now the telescope is pointed at a bright star, which has been used to set the center point which is defined by the red box. The blue box indicates the mouse cursor location, and you can increase or decrease its size with the scroll wheel. This changes the size of the region of interest for tracking. There are two tracking algorithms available. One is based on feature detection, as I've showed in my previous video. The other is simply based on brightness and will center up the brightest object it sees within the region of interest. Brightness-based tracking works well for tracking satellites against a dark background. Feature-based tracking is good for tracking objects in the daytime or with complex backgrounds. Once the program has automatically calibrated the camera and the telescope is connected, you can start tracking the satellite. It will initially start tracking based purely on the orbit and bring the satellite within the field of view of the video viewfinder, but it may not be in the field of view of the main telescope. You'll see stars in the background moving, but the satellite should stop moving relative to the view once the telescope has settled into the tracking the orbit. You can see it here just to the left of the red box. You simply click with the blue box over the satellite and it will center it up and put it in the red box. Unlike my previous Visual Basic version of the software, you don't have to be precise with the click. 
The satellite just needs to be within the blue box when you left click, and then it will center it up. If a background star passes through the green box, it can confuse the software momentarily, but unless the star is brighter than the satellite, it should generally resume tracking on the satellite, because it's programmed to automatically track whatever the brightest object is in that green box. If the program does confuse the satellite for the star, all you have to do is right-click to resume orbit-only tracking and then redesignate the satellite with another left click. The program is designed to be very easy to use and will also automatically detect your location based on your IP address. If it gets it wrong though, you can manually change that. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the release of this software. Clear skies, folks.